This portrait of Edgar Allan Poe is carved into a human skull, not Poe's skull. This portrait of Poe shows you what the master of the macabre would look like if he were a mouse. The portrait behind me shows you Poe as if he were painted by the Dutch painter Vincent van Gogh. It might come as no surprise that the Poe Museum abounds with portraits of Edgar Allan Poe painted from his lifetime up until today. But we've got a very special portrait to show you. One painted by one of the world's most renowned artists. It'll be the subject of tonight's installment of The Curator's Crypt. So this is it. It's an etched portrait of Poe by the renowned French 19th century painter, Edouard Manet. Now that's Manet, not Monet. Monet's the water lily guy who did things like this. Manet is the avant-garde, risque painter who challenged the establishment. He did things like Olympia and paintings like this. So when did he produce this? Well, we know it was before 1883 because Manet died in 1883. But he never published this during his lifetime. His widow was the one who published this in 1890, 1894, and 1904, after Manet's death. So what's the origin of this? Most people date it to right about 1860, because that's when Manet was in close contact with the French poet Charles Baudelaire. And Baudelaire wanted to publish a collection of his Poe essays. And he asked that Manet produce for him an etched portrait for the frontispiece, surrounded by a wreath containing emblems. But if we take a look at this, you got the etched portrait, you got the wreath, but no emblems. And I mentioned that this wasn't published during Manet's lifetime, so it did not appear in Baudelaire's collection. So maybe there's an alternate date for it. In 1875, Manet was contacted by another French poet, Stéphane Mallarmé. And Mallarmé wanted to produce a deluxe illustrated edition of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven in French. He was going to produce the translation and Manet was going to produce the illustrations. And it did come out in 1875. It was to be a whole series of these deluxe editions of Poe translations. But it cost so much to make, it didn't make back its initial investment. So the series began and ended with The Raven. So a lot of people think that Manet produced this portrait of Poe right about that time. But unfortunately, he died just a few years later in 1883 and never had a chance to publish it. Now, another argument we can make for why this was probably not produced in 1860 is because that it's based on a photograph of Poe called the Whitman daguerreotype and copies of it weren't really available in Europe until the 1870s. So it's pretty unlikely he would have seen a copy as early as 1860. He probably would have based his portrait of Poe on another photograph of Poe that would have been available to him. So whatever its origins, Manet has produced a distinctive, a unique image of Poe unlike anything else produced by artists of his time period. This recently came to the Poe Museum as a gift from Poe collector Susan Jaffe Tain in honor of the museum's centennial. And if you'd like to see it in person, 
just come on down to the Poe Museum and see a renowned 19th century French avant-garde artist interpretation of a renowned 19th century American avant-garde poet's portrait. And while you're here, let's take a look at Manet's illustrations of the Raven. This is a limited edition reprint of Manet's outstanding illustrations for the Raven. This illustrates the lines, Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, o'er many quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. And as you look at it, at first, you can't really tell what's going on. Manet has thrown out the rules of fine draftsmanship or drawing, and it's almost just scribbled in with quick slashes of the brush. And this is probably the best known image. This is the narrator opening his window and in flies the raven. And if you look closely, the narrator here does not resemble Poe. He actually resembles the translator, Stefan Mallarmé. Well, thanks for joining us this week. And if you'd like to help the Poe Museum preserve and present more precious Poe portraits like these, why not support us by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Poe Museum. And as a patron, you'll get access to exclusive videos and you'll be able to see videos like this before anyone else. And as a way of thanking you for joining us tonight, I leave you with more gratuitous footage of the Poe Museum Cats.